Hello everyone, today is January 21st, 2024, and in the previous video I promised that I'd show working on the 8000 Ford tractor, the PTO went bad on it, the clutch pack drive, and a lot of parts are not available, I had to outsource some of it, um, I'll try to share as much as I can where I got these parts. Uh, when I first started, I had to drain the oil, right? I needed uh, containers that holds at least 17 gallons of uh, hydraulic fluid, and I labeled everything that needs to come off of it. Took a lot of pictures and uh, cleaned a lot of things up when it came apart. Uh, the fuel tank needed to be cleaned out. But... Uh, it works now. Um, I got some more things going on in front <clears throat> that I'll show you guys later. It'll be later. This come spring almost maybe. <clears throat> but the PTO does work. It's working right now. Um, in a couple of videos, I'll show it running. But it's going to take some time getting through a lot of the other things to show how I took it apart and fixed it. But I did have some comments on welding. I promised to get to some more welding videos later. It's cold outside. I want to get this running again so I can use it for the summer of 2024 on with the baling hay. But uh, I'll do some more uh, welding videos. Um, the comments have been asked. Uh, all different kinds of welding. Um, some of the stuff mainly with plate showing how to weld with plate but i was in the trades for several years and it's a skill that you can learn to do and you'll learn it from other welders and that's where it needs to be learned but to weld on plate is where you get started and we'll do it then uh when it gets a little warmer outside but the, this tractor, the PTO is working. And that's what I want to show you guys how to work on, how I worked on it. And um, what it took to get it back together. Okay, after everything's been emptied, the hydraulic fluid, the seat's been taken off, the fuel tank's been taken off. Now I've gone right now to the linkage. And I've labeled everything and taken a bunch of pictures so that I know where everything's at. And got one of them electronic scribing tools and scratched letters and numbers. And then the hoses below that, they got replaced. I labeled them also. There is the console that all the arms are for controlling the hydraulics took many pictures of it there so I could see where everything goes. Um, it takes time to, you got to have a good bucket, put everything in it. And uh, don't lose everything. Replace something if you find it already broke. Here's a picture of that housing. This is the three-point hitch housing. There's a cylinder underneath that where those arms are and I'm grinding on a wedge right now it's really thin and what I'm going to do is stick that wedge in the very back of it I got some pressure on it lifting it and when I stroke it in there and it pop it comes right up now I'm free and I'm getting ready to pull that all the way up and I got to pay attention to everything in there um, making sure that I don't lose anything that falls to the bottom, paying attention. But there's a leveling device on the right-hand corner of the rear. Uh, if you're looking at it right now on the right-hand side. And it's just an arm that goes all the way down to the bottom. And um, it, it rotates up and down as those arms come up and down. It's a leveling device. And you just want to make sure you don't break that thing. You got to pay attention where it's at because also when you install it, you got to put it in the right location. 
in this picture I'm showing where the three-point hitch adjustment arm is. There's a bracket right there on the back of the axle. Center of this picture. There's two locations where that adjustment arm can be located. But there's four bolts that hold that bracket. And that on the other side of that bracket, inside of the, the housing there of the axle, there's a gear there that the shaft hooks up to and that gear goes down to the other gears for the PTO but there's a snap ring up inside there and it had to be taken out and then that entire shaft can come out of the back of the clutch house housing where all the clutches go into that pack okay at this point I've taken that PTO shaft out of the back of the rear of the housing of the axle and the valve body. The valve body is where hydraulic fluid comes into it and that cast iron piece that you see that's wrapped around that clutch house housing. It, the, the clutches are in that looks like a bowl when I bring it out but the valve body goes around the back of it there and it's real difficult to get that thing out of there but it's bolted up to the side of it and I wind up taking it out apart first but inside that housing is all the clutches and there's a piston in there also and that's what the hydraulic fluid does. It pushes that piston forward and causes the clutches to uh, hit um, floater plates and multiple other clutches to drive that PTO shaft. And also there's the band that you see right there. That's what goes around the housing to, it's a brake band when you pull the lever it slows down that housing and stops that clutch and the hydraulics at the same time so that it doesn't spin eventually i'll get this thing twisted just right and it'll come out You can see there's a quarter inch hydraulic line there hanging. That bolts up to the valve body of that clutch housing. Um, you'll see it more here coming up. And then to the right upper hand corner, that's the uh, hydraulic pump. There's a regulator on the other side of that quarter inch line. You can't see it right now, but it's up in there. And... I just clean things up now and show you some more things. Anyways, there's the the clutches are down in here. It has to be all taken apart. And this is the brake. And that's the band that slows down that. Slows down this housing for the clutches for the PTO. Okay, I'm trying to do this with, so you can see it. My arms are out of the way. Anyways, you can see the springs in there and the drive hub was lined up right before I dropped all this extra tooling on it. Now we're going to press it down. We want to get it on there as center as possible. And now it goes. 
and it's hitting on the back side. There's a snap ring that goes over a washer that stands on top of the spring. And right now that's what I'm doing. I'm pressing that down, the spring and the retainer to get to that snap ring. And you can see I'm using them pliers and pop that loose. And eventually I'll be able to release the bearing press and everything comes up. I really had to speed this up a little bit, the film. Um, right now I'm just trying to break loose. There is a pressure plate on top that the snap ring goes on top of that it came out right there that's your pressure plate now i'm getting into the floaters and into the clutches there was nothing left of a compound or material on the clutches and eventually i'll show some more pictures of the piston and everything else that came out of it scored up really bad i mean if you can't see this see the grooves in it Put the lighting on just try to see the grooves in it it's just ate up and there's two of them there for some reason <laughs> These are outers and the teeth on the inside of the inners. As I finish digging into this, I think there's seven or eight all together. There's like four um, clutches and there's four floaters that have no compound on them. But I'll have to dig all them out and get the piston to come up. There's a piston behind that there and then... On top of the piston, there is a uh, spring for pressure load. And I think I wound up not using anything on this uh, clutch housing. I ended up finding a used one. And um, I got lucky, though, as we get into the video. Um, there were clutch discs available and um it fit another clutch housing that i found that was not burnt as this one and tore up What I'm cleaning and spinning around on top of the piston is the wave ring that goes on the very bottom of all the clutches and the floaters. Just checking fitness. In order to get that piston out of that hub drive there, I had to hit it upside down like that. Now the wave ring come out right now, but when I got the piston out, I had to hit it on the concrete. And right now what I'm showing you is the valve body. I didn't like the grooves that were left in it. I had to take it to a machine shop and have them press a brand new brass fitting in there so that it was good tolerance. And also this is the piston. The O-ring is cracked. There's crud in there. And uh, I had to get everything cleaned up to... Uh, and get new o-rings for it and this is what it looks like after everything's taken out that is the shaft 
that goes all the way to the motor and the hub drive goes right to that and below that right there is the main drive and off to the right hand side of the picture is the hydraulic pump the gear pulley there that you see it hooks up to the hub drive as well there's a spacer uh, spool piece that goes in between those clutches and everything drives on that in the next video i'll start showing parts going together and showing the parts in sequence and how i got the uh, parts made custom because some of them were unavailable there is a chance that some of these parts are being made again right now, but at the time when I was looking for it, they were not.